Hello up bags, it's Jade. Welcome to a special PvP focused access show today. We're going to be taking a look at two games that have just announced their PvP plans or cemented them in place a little bit more. If you don't know, New World and Last Oasis are going to be two of the premium MMO experiences you're going to be playing this year. Both are PC games at the moment, but we never know, we might see these come to console in the future. Last Oasis is definitely more along the lines of Ark and Conan, games like that you've played in the past. It's very much a case of survival running around fighting for water i've taken a look at these games much more in detail so go and check out some of the other videos i've done on them but last oasis is definitely a smaller smaller team working on the game it's going to be in early access very soon and it is open world pvp you will be able to fight against other players at any time difference being is how you offline raid. They've taken the decision that you can actually take your base and pack it up in certain spots so that players won't necessarily be able to wipe you out while you're sleeping. This, in my opinion, is good news, but we'll go into that in a bit more. New World, of course, is the big fancy MMO from Amazon Gaming. It's been around a while. I got invited to take a look at the game in action last year when I went to LA or the year before even. And so it's pretty interesting what they're doing, but it has caused a bit of a a kerfuffle in the PvP community. They've just changed or just announced their blog post saying that PvP has changed quite dramatically. They're going for a war basis where you can opt in or opt out. So you'll no longer just be able to play PvP and go and attack other players randomly. You'll have to basically declare war on them. This has definitely put a little bit of a halt on my expectations. I thought New World was going to be just a full big open world PvP game. And although I'm not a huge proponent of PvP, it definitely does keep a lot of the player base engaged, especially when some of these games are light on content in terms of PvE. So if you don't have full PvP, your world's got to be filled with things to do to stop players getting bored and ultimately just not playing the game. So interesting approach, we're going to see delve into both posts and or videos and talk about the good points and the bad points from both games and how they're experiencing or what they're going to be doing with PvP for the future. You can go ahead and skip to New World if you're not that interested in what Last Oasis is about. Out. timestamp should be there now. So the devs done a few blog post videos talking about exactly combat and how you can pack up your bases and how it all pretty much works. It did leave more questions though that maybe they didn't cover enough or explain fully. So they did a follow up video pretty rapidly and pretty soon. Well, there's two ways to save log out in the game. Either you go to the edge of the oasis, the map that you're playing on, or you can also choose to use the save log out feature. It's pretty much a button that you can press and it's going to take you some time to actually safe log out to the edge of the map. But you need to be in a safe position where no one is actually attacking you. If someone attacks you or aggro you, it's going to be cancelled. If you choose to travel to the edge of the map, you can go there by foot or by a walker, packed with a base inside and a lot of cargo and go outside of this map. Everything that's inside that walker is going to be safely stored there as well. The best things of safe and logging out is that everything that you possess at that time is going to be safely stored in the wastelands. The wastelands are pretty much the desert that actually surrounds all of the oasis. As long as you are in the wastelands, meaning that you are safely logged out, the only thing you need to know is that everything that you have inside a map an oasis is in danger. It's there in the map and everyone can interact with that, you can be raided, you can be attacked. So whenever you safely logged out, what you see is the word map. And the word map is this big map with all of the actual oasis that you can travel to and the desert itself. So you can choose to travel back from the oasis where you're actually hidden or travel to a new oasis consuming water. You can safe log out whenever you want. If you want to pack your base, put in your walker and safe log out because you're going to do another stuff, you can do whenever you want. You don't need to wait for a specific time. Queen. So pretty clear, you can literally go to the edges of the map with your walker and you can log out safely. Or if you've got the time and you've got a few minutes, you can pack your stuff and you can log out. The only problems with that, of course, is if someone comes along and initiates combat, you may have to deal with them first before logging off. And I think this is a pretty decent system. It stops the griefing. It stops a lot of the major problems with offline raiding. Why so many people or so few people really stick to PvP. PvP is still pretty hardcore in some of these big games. Trying to balance out PvE experiences where you've got lots of things to do versus 
versus experiences like Rust where it's just pure carnage and it's always a case of just griefing people. No one wants to spend their whole time gaming being griefed, that isn't fun. But these open world big games do need content and if that content isn't there then it's got to be another meta, there's got to be something exciting. That's why PvP exists in Ark and Conan Exiles. Even though some of them games have lots of things to do in PvE, it still tailors or caters to a hardcore audience that play PvP. So I think Last Oasis and their developers obviously have got the right idea here. It still means you can get raided if you're not paying attention to players around you, you're not being aware of scouts. You could easily find your base under attack from a major crew. You can plan out raids correctly and it could be a simple case of taking players unawares and literally taking all their loot. Don't forget also Last Oasis, lots of these grids, lots of these hexagon servers, they'll only be there for limited time anyway. The whole point is that they're kind of being turned on or off. The lore is that the world is spinning very, very slowly and so parts of it are covered in cold and ice, other parts are covered in scorching sun. And so there's only small strips of land that are actually safe to be on because it's the right temperature. The reality is this means that they can create servers that have very different resources. They can create events. They can create all sorts of crazy stuff that players would want to go to. And so you will have these grids that will be pretty empty sometimes because maybe they don't have a decent resource. And then you'll have grids that are filled with life because they're all fighting over one thing. They also have trade grids as well. And these trade grids can be taken over by players. So if you want to go and do some trading you may have to go through certain areas. They've also implemented a tax system much like Atlas where you will be given a little percentage of what you harvest if a grid is claimed by a big clan. I like this idea as well. As well, It gives a bit of something to the big clans for their work in building themselves up and overtaking certain areas. So again, lots of details here. I'm going to be going through much more detailed videos talking about Last Oasis, but it's more just about the approach to PvP that I'm focusing on today. Ark and Conan Exiles have big problems on their servers with being offline raided. It's pretty much the meta. No one actually gets 50 of their dinosaurs to go and fight 50 of another player's dinosaurs. It's all about just seeing if they're offline so you can go and raid them, or if they've only got one person on there. That's why there's hundreds of dinosaurs in Ark around people's bases to try and soak up the bullets or damage from the other player's creatures. A lot of the time you'll just cheese, you'll just find a way to get through them, and then you've only got to worry about turrets. Now that sounds easy, it obviously is a big part of the game, it's very hard to do that if you're very good at building bases. But for the most part, it means servers are lagged out with the amount of turret towers that are up, the sheer amount of creatures that are blocking bases, and it's become almost a strategy game rather than a PvP game. It's literally tower defense. Conan Exiles has a variety of different servers. They have PvE conflict and PvP. Full PvP that you can attack other players, but only in certain windows. They do these windows depending on your region, which is normally around 5pm in the evening to around 9pm at night or something like that. I could be wrong on them times. And in that window, you can attack their other players' bases, you can loot them, you can destroy them, you can do what you want. All other times, if you see a player out in the open, you can attack the player, but you just won't be able to destroy their bases. And that idea works, but it only works for that proportion of people that have them set hours. Lots of people don't work them set hours and then they have servers where there's never any base damage it's only ever just about attacking other players in the open and that leads us nicely on to new world so new world alpha has been running a good while now i had a chance to play it, although i didn't sink much time into it when i had access and i did get a chance firsthand to see the developers in la ask a bunch of questions and see where they were going now obviously this was a while back Originally, their PvP experience was very much open world PvP at all times. If you attack a player, you get a bunch of their loot and you become a criminal. Very reminiscent of Fallout 76 and their system. There was one good exception to this, that players who were attacked, they would actually keep anything that was equipped to them. They would only lose any items in their inventory. This is a pretty good compromise and I thought this worked pretty well. But the devs found that there was a lot of griefing going on. Big hordes of players, maybe 10 players, or really skilled players were just going around and constantly, constantly griefing new players. The only safe spot was outposts acting as sanctuaries and if you built up a base it meant other players could come possibly and attack you and basically take out all your progress. If you were a criminal or if you clicked that you were going to be a criminal, if you died you lost all your items and all your gear. 
Now New World want to make an MMO, they've never really set out to say it's just purely PvP. Despite obviously the alpha being very much the focus and a lot of PvP action taking place, Amazon Gaming clearly want to build a big huge world and you look at all the other rival big MMOs like ESO, lots of them games have PvP separated from the main game or they have ways that it's basically not destroying all your hard work. You're not going to log into ESO and find your base destroyed. It's only a case of ever taking out another player in the certain PvP zones. Or if they still have that game mode, I can't remember if it's still there. I've not played ESO in ages where it was literally just a war small mini server where you would battle it out across factions. And this is the approach that New World are going to be taking as well. They want the PvP to be skilled. They want it to be fair. And they want all participants to be really knowledgeable that they're taking part in it. They've said they're not going to be offering any PvP only servers, although it could be something they investigate maybe after launch. And they're really calling this faction conflicts and wars for territory. You'll get lots of rewards and bonuses for taking part in it, but you don't have to. If you're really not a PvP player, then the new world game may be more up your street than Last Oasis. War mode is 50 versus 50 and it's by appointment. Companies will declare war on territories that they wish to take over, draft a roster of 50 combatants and agree on timing for the battle. The war will take place on a protected battlefield, keeping anyone that isn't confirmed to participate out. This will help ensure a fair fight without distraction. During the battle there are two sides, attackers and defenders. Defenders will attack the claim flag which sits Defenders will protect the claim flag which sits in the centre of their fort. The fort is equipped with storage, crafting stations and upgradable wall defences. The attackers will earn points during battle to upgrade and build siege weapons and towers. The war ends if the attackers are able to break through the gates and claim the flag, or if time expires. During the course of the battle both sides can earn points to spend on upgrades and gear. Players who have homes in a territory at war will not lose any of their possessions based on the outcomes of the battle. If you choose to sit out a war, you won't be penalised for your non-participation, but you also won't be rewarded should your side win the war. Players on the winning side of the war will reap rewards for their efforts, etc, etc. They're going to have obviously a little bit more detail about the forts and siege warfare in future. So obviously that sounds pretty good. It sounds pretty enticing. Having set battles that you'll take part in and if they've got the player base for it you could always imagine that's going to be pretty good but if the player base is dipping we still don't know exactly how many players are going to be on the server as from what i remember they were saying something about it being just a big massive server with possibly thousands of players i could be wrong on that and so the idea that you know you won't have anyone taking part yeah it seems a bit farcical of course you'll have people taking part in these battles there may be queues to get into these war battles, especially if the loot and the items on offer are pretty good. It does also eliminate the griefing and it does also eliminate offline raiding. And again, I'm all down for that. I really do not like offline raiding, but I do recognize that so many of these games live and die by what they offer with PVP. If you don't have full PVP out in the world, then you've got to have compelling reasons to keep playing the game. You've got to have lots of PVE content. And so far, obviously, they're still launching stuff but we're still a few months away and we really don't know much about the PvE activities. We know there's a magical resource and there's lots of creatures possibly, maybe locations to explore and dungeons to conquer, and obviously that stuff's gonna come, but we're only a few months out from release and we don't have any real clear picture of what that is. They're keen to stress they are gonna introduce many, many more new PvE enemies and they have got some sort of haul system in place very much like Conan Exiles. If a clan or a player gets to a certain point, he may trigger an attack by a bunch of PV enemies. These are called corrupted breaches where the world events within the ground open up and erupt with corrupted en energy and enemies. Additionally, territory owners will need to protect their forts and withstand an onslaught as wave or enemies attempt to bash their gates down and wipe out at their company. So yeah, that hasn't gone down well on social media with obviously the PVP crowd maybe being small but being more vocal. They've been on social media obviously doing a little bit of damage control because there is going to be a little bit of negativity coming from this. Whether or not it's a small minority or not, they are definitely being vocal and that could potentially be putting off other players. I definitely agree, you need a system where it's not a case of just being griefed or being trolled all the time by other players, but you still need it to be compelling and a good reason for lots of these players to actually come play your game. When you run through PvE cycles and you basically have completed everything you can do with the dungeons and taking on enemies and the hordes, it does kind of get a bit boring after a while. That's why Ark has so much taming and emphasis on breeding because it does give players something else to do. 
Conan Exile suffers greatly sometimes because once players get to level 60 and they have completed all the dungeons on the map, there isn't much for them left. Hence why Funcom have added more and more dungeons over the last year and a half to try and keep players playing the game with new content. But it still isn't enough, there needs to be a fresher approach. And their latest Thrall update adds perks and reasons to go and get new Thralls all the time, so that adds more meta to the game. The announcement post is filled with lots and lots of Care Bear comments saying that the game is now catering just to PvE and that PvP is pretty much dead. I think there are definitely some valid comments here. I also think there are definitely some way over the top toxicity coming from the usual PvP crowd. It all just depends. We don't know what the rest of the game has to really offer yet. We've only seen a trailer. Obviously people that played in the alpha, they shouldn't even be leaking any info that they played. I personally think they should have had more PvP zones and PvE areas. Even if it was only three big circles that offered PvP with maybe major settlements or major places to go and get loot, that would obviously open you up to risk from attack from other players. But to have no PvP at all, so if you come across another player, you won't be able to go and attack him. You'll only be able to do that if you offer war and he says yes. And then that starts an event where you have to gather 50 players. It's just a little bit too much. It's not going to keep the PvP players happy. And so they are going to lose a big proportion. And since the alpha was filled with players actually doing that because there just wasn't enough PvE content, it's not a great look for New World. Right now, they have to show how much PvE content is going to be in the game at launch. Be really ramping it up over the next few weeks to show there's lots of life in this game other than just PvP. It's Amazon Gaming, of course. They're a big company. They've got lots of money to throw around. I don't think they're going to be too worried about a smaller section, possibly, of PvP players. But I've played and seen enough of these games. This new world is much more like Conan and Ark than people give it credit for rather than some of the other games. In fact, maybe that's why they've actually decided to do this because they don't want to be seen to be too similar to them games. They want to be more of a traditional MMO like World of Warcraft or ESO. But even then, ESO, as far as I remember, still offers better PvP elements right now. And with only a few months to launch, New World kind of are settling in on this. This isn't a case of early access. New World is going to be a full game. Let me know what you think about that, guys. I'll keep you guys in the loop. I'm very much still excited for New World. It is going to offer an experience, a new one, and I'm going to be giving it a shot for sure. If it's got compelling content and the and the war stuff kind of makes a little nice addition, then I'm still all down for it. Last Oasis is going to be coming out, I think, a bit earlier than New World. I'm expecting a early access release date any day now. And of course, New World's not out until May. For the best in survival news, make sure you've liked the video, you're subscribed and you've got notification bell tinged. I'll see you rat bags very soon.